everyone. It is a very special day today because I get to speak with author Reese Bowen again. I love talking to Reese. She is amazing. I think this is the third time I'm talking to her. And we are talking about her holiday book called What Child Is This? It is a novella. It is a very quick read. Um, I loved the story. Uh, this is the first novella I've ever read by her. I don't even know if it's her first one or not. I'm going to ask her that. But um, if you want a really short Christmas book to read, like you have an afternoon off or something like that, go get this book. You are going to love it. Reese is like the ultimate storyteller. It's historical fiction. It's set in London, World War II. So everybody, here is Reese. Hi, everyone. I am so, so excited today because I am speaking with author Reese Bowen again. I think this is the third time we've talked this year, actually. So I am so excited to be talking about her brand new, it is a novella, um, What Child Is This Perfect for the Holidays? Plus, if you have like a half a day off, you can read this, pull it up on your Kindle, you can read it, and it's quick and it's beautiful. So thank you so much, Reese. Oh, hi, Michelle. It's good to be here again. Yeah. Oh, I love this story. And like you said, it's kind of like a long, short story, a long, short story, <laughs> but yeah. it's, it, there's a lot packed in here. I mean, it isn't, yeah. you know, I know it's 49 pages, but the story that you packed into this short story, I don't know, is it harder to write this for you? Um, this This length of short story isn't hard because it is. It's like a small novel without any of the subplots and without everything else. I find a, a real short story, you know, the sort that takes 10 to 15 pages, I find that's quite challenging because you have to decide what, which moment do I come in, which moment do I reveal something, which moment do I leave, you know. So that's, I always find that's a challenge. But this, this was lovely. It was just, um, it was fun and it was nice to know that it was short and I didn't think, oh God, I've got another 150 pages to go, you know, so it was nice. Yeah, well, I think it's nice for Christmas, too, because, like I said, if you have, like, a ha sometimes it's hard during the holidays to have time to sit down to read a 300-page book. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of nice to get a little Christmas story in, and it's a feel-good story, and, you know, and you can then go back to whatever you were doing. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and if you're yeah. like the Icelanders, you know, the Icelanders have the, whatever they call it, the Yule Book of Blood, <laughs> where on Christmas Eve, everybody gives everybody else a book. And they spend they spend the whole night in bed reading the book and eating chocolate. Doesn't that sound good? Um, yes. See, everybody could read this easily because it's only forty nine pages, so they could um, they could um, you know they could get through the whole thing before Christmas morning. That's that's an awesome idea. <laughs> I like that idea. And you know, I wasn't going to read it all in one sitting. I was I was like, no, I'm just going to start it and then I'm going to go back to it. And no, I couldn't do it. I read it in one sitting. It just, it doesn't take long, and I just didn't want to yeah. stop because I wanted to see how it was going to end. So. Yeah, I think it's one of those you have to know, don't you? Yes, you just do have to know what's yeah. going to happen. And yeah. so let's just tell everybody, I mean, this setting is during the London Blitz. It's 1940 in London, and you open the book with Jack and Maggie Harris. Yeah, they're a couple in the east end of London, um, a sort of a working class couple. He works on the docks. She's a homemaker. And when the when the story starts, it's in the middle of the London Blitz and um, a bomb falls that's going to destroy their house. There's, it's an incendiary bomb. It sets the street on fire, and they're told to get out. So that, you know, they're, they're essentially mirroring, you know, I wanted to mirror the, Christ, the, the Christmas nativity story. They have to flee for their lives at the beginning of, of the story, you know, with, with Mary and Joseph having to leave their own land. So, you know, I was kind of thinking of that at the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, because I've written about World War II so much, I wanted the story to be in World War II. And I wanted to make people think what, what it was like to go through that. What happens when you've lost everything suddenly like that? You know, we, we have the parallel with the wildfires we've had in California the last two years, where people literally have lost everything. And it's just a really sobering thought. Yeah, it it is really, you know, and I think, you know, with how you opened it up, I mean, um, the very beginning, Maggie says, it won't even feel like Christmas this year. And yeah. what she's talking about is the fact that they've, I don't think it's a giveaway because it's in the first no. chapter, but, yeah. you know, they, they've lost a child. And, yes. you know, yeah. you don't go into much detail about that, but it doesn't matter, right? No, it just, it haunts, it haunts everything in their life, really, the fact that, their child died at Christmas time a, a couple of years before. 
and um, of course, you know, everything's piling up together. I mean, she is disappointed because their meat rationing coupons were not enough to get a chicken. There are, you know, the, everything's on short supply. The, there was only one chicken in the store, and it went to a bigger family than them. And so he's brought home a piece of liver, and she thinks liver on Christmas Day. You know, how could that be? How could anything be worse than that? And of course, things are worse than that as it goes along. Yes, and and what I love how you end chapter one is Maggie jumping on a train. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> right, escape. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I love that because it's like she doesn't think about it. You know, she just knows the situation is really bad. It's horrible. She doesn't know what to do. She doesn't want to be where she is. She doesn't want to go yeah. back. He wants yeah. to go back. You know, she yeah. doesn't want to go back, and so she jumps on a train, and he has no choice but to follow her. On yeah, the train. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, also I think she's um, down, you know, the underground uh, stations were used as bomb shelters all through the war, and it's packed with people, and I think at this stage, it's just, she's, you know, we know, we learn that she's a country girl, she's come from a farm, and she fell in love with him and moved to London with him, but um, just overwhelming humanity around her, and obviously with the smells and the sounds and everything, on top of what she's just witnessed and what she's just gone through, it's just too much. She just has to get away, and she doesn't care where. Yeah. I, I kind of like that it was her that made that decision. And I do love his um, character. I, I love it. <laughs> you know, he's kind of like a comic relief and a weird – you know, he's trying to cheer her up. You know, yeah. he's the, the optimist. He's yeah. the – you know, and she – can't see, you know, she's just knocking him down left and right, everything. And then, you know, she's like, well, somebody's going to have to take action. That's how I looked at it. It's like, so yeah. she gets on the train, you know, like yeah. something's got to happen here. And yeah, um, his, character, his character, he, he, I didn't want to make him bad, but he's the sort of person who is walking a fine line, um, mm -hmm. who could have gone bad if he hadn't married her, I think. You know, I think she's his rock. She's kept him straight. And, uh, you know, he's not above bringing home a pound of sugar that accidentally fell off a pallet at the docks, you know, that right. kind of thing. But, um, right. you know, it could have been worse if she hadn't married him, I think. So, you know, he, he adores her. That's the one thing that's quite clear in it. He will do anything for her. Well, and I do feel, and I'm not going to spoil because it's so short, just no, you know. But right. it's like the fact that they both have different things that would make them happy basically. Yeah. You find yeah. out that they both have their separate, you know, so as much as she puts him down for that, she has her weaknesses, too, and what she wants. And, yeah. you know, and we kind of go from there. And it was just, you know, it's, like I said, it's short, and it's, it's, you wrap it up so nice and neat, and it's like you just put it down, and you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I love well, that you know, they're, bo they're both given essentially what they want for Christmas. Yeah. And they both have to turn it down. You know, that's, that's what the story yeah. is, I think. Yes. I was kind of I've had so many people who've written to me and said, um, oh, can we have a sequel to this? We want to know more about these characters. Can you make it into a longer yeah. book? Like, oh, it's a Christmas story. That's it. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing. I was like, well, we could visit them next Christmas, right? Yeah, but, we could. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah, I kept yeah. thinking about the gifts of the Magi. That's kind of what it reminded me of. You yeah. know, the different, yeah. you, you know, in a weird way, whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we talked, you are coming out with a new book in the beginning of the year. And, you know, Risa, I love that you just write book after book after, you're always onto something new. You write something and you're over, already on to, you know, the next one <laughs> yeah. and the next one. Yeah. And um, so tell us about what we have to look forward to in the new year. Yeah, well, it's coming out on February the 12th. And um, it's a book called The Victory Garden, and I've moved away from World War II for this one. I've moved back to World War I, which is also a time I've been dying to write about. Um, and um, the whole concept of the book is so many men in England were killed. I mean, you know, it was many, many more than any other war. And um, I thought, well, what if you have what, – what do you do when the men don't come back? And, of course, the story really starts because – there are no men to work in the fields, and so England is going to starve if there isn't a women's land army formed. And so uh, my characters become part of this land army. And then you think, what a huge step this was for women. They were wearing corsets. They had their hair up in buns. They had skirts down to their ankles. And then suddenly they're expected to go and work in the fields. So, you know, they throw away their corsets. They cut their hair. It's a huge step forward for, for women. 
but then they're asked to do things they really didn't believe that were possible. Like, if you have a village, who becomes the blacksmith when the blacksmith isn't coming back? Mm. Who runs the pub and, t- and pushes those big barrels of beers down the steps? You know, all those things stretch women beyond their capabilities, really, but they manage it somehow. And I think the whole thing with women is that we're a great support group for each other. And that's what this book will be about. It's about women supporting women, too. Oh, well, I can't wait to read it. And, you know, I love reading about World War One. I, I really do. I mean, I read so much World War II, but I, mm-hmm. I feel like I don't know as much about World War One. I. I feel like they glaze over it in, you know, any history class. For some reason, in the United yeah. States, we kind of just like, yeah, there was World War II, but then there was World, I mean, World War One, but yeah. then, you know, where yeah. in Eng- because you are English, I mean, in yeah. Europe, it's way, you know, it was the Great War, and um, I love learning about it, and I love reading yeah. about it, so yeah. I, I can't wait. And yeah, I, mean, I want to go ahead. Yeah, please go on. No, no, go ahead. Finish it. <laughs> well, I was just going to brag about you because I just wanted to tell everybody that your book, um, The Tuscan Child, was on Goodreads Historical Fiction of the Year um, yes. list. Yeah. So yes, I was just going to brag about you. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So it was – I mean, World War One was such a horrible war compared with – I mean, World War Two. obviously, no war is fun. But the people who fought, fought in it and everything, they thought they were doing something noble and good. And mm-hmm. you know, there was a sense of camaraderie and everything. World War I was nightmarish because it was fought, it was conducted by generals who'd actually been in charge of cavalry, of horses. And they, they played it in the same way. So they would send men over the top against tanks and mortars and gas. You know, and so we had modern weapons, but we had outdated warfare. And so these poor young men, they were in trenches, and they mm. were in the, sometimes in mud up to their necks. I mean, people died in mud. Um, and then they were sent over the top just to be mown down. And my father-in-law kept a diary throughout the whole war, um, and he was actually sent out to North Russia at the end. But, um, and he, he took daily statistics, and you'd see the number of men that were, that were killed versus the number of yards they gained. And it was like several thousand for five yards. Wow. And, and then the next day they'd lose that back again. It was a stupid – and the whole war was started because an Austrian archduke was shot. I mean, it made no sense. The whole war made no sense. So, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, it's interesting to write about from that point of view. Oh, well, I can't wait to read it. Like, I, I love all your books. But, yeah. you know, I, <laughs> I, I'm i glad you're going back to World War One because Yeah, and, of know. course, it is a big romance story, too. You know, there has to be some <laughs> right. sort of love in my books, too. So there's a, there's a very bittersweet romance in it that you'll like. Oh, that's awesome. Well, yes, of course. <laughs> of course there is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to put the links to um, to What Child Is This for everybody. It's on Kindle. You can go right to, you know, your Amazon and get it on your Kindle immediately. And um, I just, you know, thank you so much for talking with me. And we, we will talk again in February about this one, about the Victory Garden. Because oh, I'm beautiful. looking at the cover right now. I pulled it up while you were talking. And it's yeah. beautiful. What it's a right cover. Right. Yeah. Ah. No, it, is, it is a nice cover, right? Uh, you know, I get so much input on my covers. They send me all these different pictures, and and I can actually say, well, I like this one, but how about if we make the garden more red? And, you know, how about if we have this? And that, it's, so it's, it's lovely to have control over my covers like that. I really, really like it. Yeah, and, of course, we have the poppies in the cover, which I love. Yeah. Cause oh, yeah, it, we, yeah, we have, have some so poppies. Here, but yeah, it's World War One. yeah. 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 I love that. That's, yeah. It's just, just yeah. it's beautiful. So I yeah. can't wait. I cannot wait to read it. Thank you so much, Reese. You have a happy holiday. And Thank you. All you too. Will yes. yes. be listed underneath here. We'll, we'll talk in the new year, okay? Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye. That is Reese. Oh, my God. I love her so much. So much. And I feel really bad because I kept cutting her off because I was so excited to talk about everything. And I like wanted her, you know, I like bragging about her because she is so amazing. And uh, it was early morning for her. And sorry, Reese, I like kept talking over you because I like wanted to get it all in. And this book is so good. So good. A novella. I mean, it's 49 pages. You can read it in an afternoon and you will be so happy you did. Okay. Um, book is, uh, Amazon link is listed below here. And I, I get so excited to talk to her because she is like one of my favorite writers. 
I mean, no one can write like her. And, and like I said, like I just to keep up with her books and I can't wait till the one coming out in February, I will be on top of it. And I, you know, she's historical fiction and I love historical fiction. And then, you know, she just tells the best stories. So anyway, go read the book before Christmas. You will be happy that you did. Thank you so much, Reese. The next time we talk, I will try not to talk so fast over you. I will, I will calm down. I will control myself. Okay. So, uh, hit like everybody. If you like listening to Reese, if you like listening, me talk over Reese <laughs> and, and subscribe, please. I put out videos every single day. Have a great day, everyone.